What's up, guys? Hey. It's Trinity and Daniel, and we are here. We're going to talk about uh, The Incredibles 2. And even though this is a live discussion, we're going to talk in great spoiler detail about how awesome it was and how much we liked it. So, Trinity, I'm going to start out by asking you a question. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, who was your favorite character in the first Incredibles? Um, What's up, Jesse? <laughs> I think in the first one, mm-hmm. um, probably Elastigirl. Elastigirl. Yeah. Elastigirl from the first Incredibles. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. like, she was stretchy and stuff like that, so I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, she was so cool. I personally really loved Frozone. Got a blast. <laughs> <laughs> like Jimmy Neutron, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I love Frozone. Frozone was the best. No worries, Jesse. True, though. Yeah, I take care. Frozone was really good in the first one, too. He's so cool. Ice sliding around. He didn't have, like, very many parts. Yeah, he wasn't a prominent character, but he was a good supporting character to Bob Parr. Mm -hmm. And uh, just having him in there was just a lot of fun. And it was really cool to see him come back at the end to help them take down the giant syndrome robo, you know, orb thing with the arms and legs. That was cool. Now, what's cool, I wanted to get your take on this. It's been 15 years since the movie came out, right? Mm-hmm. Since the first one came out. Now they've started up with the second. Mm-hmm. What What were your thoughts going into this film? Well, obviously it would pick up right where I left off. And, like, mm-hmm. I kind of didn't know what the, they were, what, what they were going to do, like, with the storyline and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. um, like, what would be the next, like, challenge for them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, totally. like... Watching the previews, you could tell that, like, um, Elastigirl sh- stole the show. Yeah. Other than, like, Mr. Incredible in the first one. Mm-hmm. So, like, obviously I expected that she would have, like, a big part in it and stuff like that. But. Yeah. Other than that, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I was feeling the same way. When I was watching the first trailer, part of me was thinking, it looks like the movie's gonna focus, like, really strong. Like, most of the movie was about Elastigirl. Mm-hmm. And she had a very prominent role. But. It was fun to see that when we got into the movie, there was actually a really nice, even spread between all the different characters. Yeah, for sure. Even though the primary storyline was Elastigirl, they gave a lot of great screen time to the other characters. Like Jack-Jack. Like Jack-Jack, exactly. Like, especially the characters that didn't really get the spotlight in the first one. Mm -hmm. They made sure to evenly, or to give everyone the spotlight evenly. Yeah. Yeah, give everyone a pretty much equal amount of time to develop the characters, Mm -hmm. which was great. And then um, I I really liked that. But the villain in the first one, Syndrome, right? Yes. And then, you know, there was a couple of villainous elements in the new movie, Mm -hmm. right? So there was, um, for those of you guys who may be watching this later, we're about to talk about, you know, some of the details of the The Incredibles 2. Um, if you've seen the trailer, if you've seen the end of Incredibles 1, you know that it picks up with the Underminer. And Underminer is a part of the story. He kicks off the story. Mm-hmm, yeah. And um, it's very interesting. They didn't close his story. Yeah, uh, yeah, I forget about that. He's still around. Yeah, they He's... just stopped the machine that he was in. They didn't stop him. Yeah, they foiled his plan, but he was never caught. Yeah. And that was a very interesting thing that I was like, oh my gosh, so they're like, setting us up for more. Yeah, I was going to say, so there's going to, there is a very likely chance there's going to be another one. Totally. And I'm not about to wait another 15 years. <laughs> They'll probably do it faster. I think. Hopefully. Very likely what it was, was that the, the director was working, I forget what he was working on, some like Mission Impossible or like. But like more than one movie, wasn't it? It was like more Oh yeah. Movies. I mean, the director, I don't remember what his name was, like. Brad Bird or something like that, but he had like multiple films that he was working on between The Incredibles and now. And this was a passion project he wanted to do because this was his baby, but um, he was finally able to get around to doing this with Pixar and Disney. And so. And also, he was probably trying to work really hard on it to become like a good, grounded, like second movie, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, for sure. He didn't want it to be some like. Cru- yeah, some crummy weak sequel just for the sake of a sequel and this certainly wasn't this was a masterpiece Mm -hmm. that was 
just as good, if not better, than the first one. Yeah. For sure. Like, everyone who saw it was like, this was almost, I think, either as good or better than the first one. It's obvious, like, he put intention, he put quality, he put the time in, and he certainly had the time, 15 years is a long time. Yeah. But he put the time in to making it a great movie, not just a sequel to a great movie. And that was important, and that played a huge factor, but... I think that Brad Bird, even if it takes him 15 years, which I hope it doesn't, I hope that he gets going with the number three. Yeah. Because they set it up. They set it up by leaving prominent villains out there in the open and by also making it so that supers could not only come back into the light just like they did at the end of the first one, Mm -hmm. but also now it's legal. Yeah. They, Yeah. They were able to turn that over on its head and that story was able to come to a kind of completion... But the completion of that story arc opens it up. Alan Kamalinga, Bullseye. What's up, Jeremy? Yeah, it's good to see you guys on here. We're talking about The Incredibles 2. If you guys haven't seen it, you need to see it. It's amazing. It's a great film. Mm -hmm. Super good. Probably, honestly, and you guys know, by following this channel, you know I watch a lot of movies. I've seen a lot of the movies this year, including Black Panther and uh, Ready Player One, Infinity War. There was a lot of killer movies out this year. I will say... I might have, might have enjoyed the first film, the uh, uh, the Incredibles, more than I I enjoyed some of the other Marvel films. Even, you know, like I love those films. Do not understand, like don't misunderstand that I don't like those films. I love those films, but the Incredibles two was an absolute masterpiece. There was like nothing wrong with that movie. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah, I mean? For sure. I can't think of a single thing I would have changed. Yes, there's spoilers for this for for this discussion. So if you haven't seen the film, you want to see the film, I'll tell you this. We're not we're not going to tell you anything that's going to deter you from seeing this film. But we will talk in detail about some of the things that is that we liked. New or, that was yeah. new, things that they they added, things that they changed. Uh, no way Maria said. <laughs> no way no way to uh, which thing I said. To the uh, how good Incredibles was. It was amazing. It was fantastic. Absolutely love it. Mr. Funcaster, it's great to see you on here. It's awesome, man. Feel free to chime in in the comments. I'm reading these as we go. But yes, I mean, so they were able to, this was something that we both talked about previously, was that they took new characters and added them in. Because you guys know at the end of in- Incredibles 1, they had um, supers came back into the light. So we know that they are um, in existence. They've just been hiding. So they were able to bring them out a little bit. Even so some of these, legal. it's legal, or yeah, well, in the fight to make it legal. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were able to bring some of them out, and they played on them in a really cool way. Oh, like yeah. the the new villain, you've, you, I'm sure that you've all, if you've seen the trailer, you know his name is the Screen Slaver, and it's a really interesting uh, kind of like hypnosis based villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really cool, really cool. I was, at first it's like okay, this is kind of a generic type bad guy, but they played it in a way that it was really smooth and it allowed the story to flow forward. It but al- I would say a lot of people were like, "Oh, you can totally guess who it is right off the bat," but it's like you have to understand that it's a, supposed to be a kids movie. Exactly. So he's not gonna make it like super difficult to figure out who yeah. the screen's labor was. Totally. I mean, it's not. It's not. So- Super difficult to figure out. Like you just said, mm-hmm. it's a kids' movie. Give it a little bit of grace. That was the only thing I heard anybody ever say complaint negative about. about yeah. yeah, that was the only complaint. It's like, yeah, but you kind of know who it is already when you get it's in. Like, it's like in it's every kid. So movie, what? It's like that, I feel like it's like what what movie in in this year came out and you didn't know exactly who the villain was yeah, exactly. when they start. You know, it's like you already know. It's like, like it's really rare. All Marvel movies are like this. You know the villain, like... Oh, totally. Yeah, super. It's, it's crazy. Let's read, let's read a couple of these. Yeah, no way. She said better than Marvel. So I wouldn't... I, I'm not going to say that Incredibles 2 was better than Marvel, but as its own film, it did amazing. I loved it, and I would say that it felt more fun than, Mar- than the Marvel films this year. Now, I, you guys know, like, I love Marvel. I, like, I, I died watching Infinity War. It killed, and I watched it multiple times. Same with Black Panther. Love those films. Oh, I'm sorry. Is my, is my mic quiet? Sorry, I, I think I rested my phone on the, on the couch. And can you guys hear me now? 
Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Let me know if this is working. Oh yeah, they totally introduced X Force knockoffs. <laughs> well, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that they they added. Thank you. Okay, good. So it was because I was resting my phone down on the couch. That's why it got a little bit quieter. So um, yeah, they introduced. Well, the whole idea here is not only X Force ripoffs, but the Incredibles themselves are the Fantastic Four ripoffs. They just reassign the roles. So the thing is actually the dad figure, and instead of having the dad be the stretchy guy, they, they swap that for the mom so she can reach long distances and she can kind of control the kids when they're out of control. You know, she has that ability. The dad is super strong. I feel like that's more fitting anyway. You know, yeah, it's like sure. kind of a masculine, That'd you know, testosterone type. Of, exactly. It's a little bit strange. So I, I love the Fantastic Four. I love them. And I love the characters. I enjoyed the first two Fantastic Four films, despite the fact that they were not of great production. Uh, it wasn't, you know, the best. It wasn't a good script. It was a little bit campy. I enjoyed it still. I was younger, and it's got a nostalgia type thing for me. But, um, you know, you guys, you have everyone has their own opinions on that. I think it was a, a decent cast-ish, you know. But uh, Mr. Funcaster, maybe you can help with that. Redo the Fantastic Four a couple times. That'd be great. <laughs> um, I think there's a number of people that can play those roles. Fant Fantastic Four translates into Incredibles almost flawlessly. And uh, Jack Jack even having the flame on powers is kind of like that extra nod. They just swap Dash for Johnny Storm. And, um, you know, Violet gets Sue Storm's powers exactly. And, um, you know, the mom gets Reed Richards' powers. The dad gets the thing's powers, just not rocks. You know, he's a human. So density and all that stuff still stands. Um, but it's just really, it's really funny. They just swapped it all around. And um, even the Underminer is based off of Mole Man. You know, it's like it's really, really close translations. But then they added in those X-Men type characters, X-Force type characters. And yeah, it's like, but it worked. It worked really well. I genuinely love The Incredibles. I say to all my friends, The Incredibles is the Fantastic Four movie done right. And that's like, I mean, they told a good story. They had, in, yeah, in part two, I agree. I, even part one, I feel like it was a good Fantastic Four film just reimagined and that's all it was is like it's, it's real they did a good job they did a really good job they won and um i i'm still looking forward to i think yeah sorry no it's okay i've been talking for a really long time go ahead Trini. <laughs> i was just gonna say i think it's like the best sequel disney has ever done oh my gosh i i actually you know what i think i'm gonna have to agree with that i believe that the incredibles 2 is the best sequel ever yeah like they, for it was really really well yeah it's so done. good yeah probably my favorite animated um spoilers yeah a little bit there is a little bit of spoilers on this but it's not to the degree that um it's gonna ruin anything for you i'm trying to make sure that we have this discussion so that you guys who have not seen the film yet you understand it's like look this is probably one of the it's up in the air as one of the best films of the year yeah for sure one of the best films of the year that's including infinity war that's including black panther that's including ready player one and it's easily i i can say this my favorite animated superhero film you might say oh there's only like a couple of those there's not. There's actually quite a few of those. I'm referring to all of the Batman, the, all the DC animated films. I'm referring to um, any and all of the Marvel. Um, Lego Batman has been my favorite film. Uh, in Honestly, and you guys might judge me for this, the Lego Batman is my favorite Batman film of all time. <laughs> and I mean it. It's my favorite Batman film of all time because I relate to the whole like re nostalgia all over the place. Um, and I'm, you know, my next favorite would be The Dark Knight. And then The Dark Knight Rises. And then um, I would probably say, I don't know, the one with uh, Michael Keaton. I forget what that one was. I think it's just the Batman. But yeah, that one was great. Mike and Grady, I barely saw Infinity War last week and made the whole way without any spoilers. I almost had a mental <laughs> breakdown to say the least. I can't even believe you were on. Oh, and A Quiet Place was my favorite film of the year. I haven't seen that yet. I, I, I want to see it. Yeah, I heard it's it a suspense good. thrill ride. Yeah. That yes, and uh, congratulations to Mikey Negretti for making it all the way out to here. What is that? Two months after Infinity War, something like that. 
It's crazy. I don't, I don't remember when it came out exactly, but I believe we're probably cl- approaching two months or something like that. It's a, yeah, definitely a must-see. Really good. Lego Batman is one of the best Batman films out there. Um, even despite the fact that it's an animated comedy, they just killed it. Mm-hmm. They did such a great job. And I, I bought it on DVD. I don't do that a lot. I typically just stream stuff. But I bought it on DVD because I had to have it. And uh, Zach Nagatani, Kitty Fat 101, we are talking about The Incredibles 2. If you haven't seen it, it's incredible. And that's not a pun. I mean it like a high praise. Like it's wow, fan. It's, so it's absolutely. It is a pun, but <laughs> unintended. It's absolutely amazing. Anybody who hasn't seen it needs to see it. One of the best films of the year. And the new characters, Claire joined the, yeah, Claire joined, awesome, yay. Um, Is Infinity War even in theaters anymore? I believe it still is. Yes, it is. Um, I think it's going to be leaving very soon, and then we'll start to see it, like, coming out on, like, we'll see the Blu-ray, you know, buy it on Blu-ray next week, or buy it on Blu-ray, you know, whatever. I probably will buy it on Blu-ray, because I definitely want those special features. Um, (laughs) Zach, hi, Claire. It's fantastic. And you know what else? You know what else? I am certainly going to be buying The Incredibles 2 on DVD or Blu-ray because I want those special features as well. If you guys didn't see, do you remember Jack-Jack Attack? Yeah. If you guys don't have it, just YouTube Jack-Jack Attack. Um, if you haven't seen that, in the in The Incredibles 1... Where, you know, they're, they're all coming back from their, like, hero's mission. They just took down, like, Syndrome's robot. And then Syndrome is on – they don't know this, but Syndrome is at their house and he's got Jack-Jack. Um, she, Helen Parr is checking all of her emails and you hear, like, Hey, Mrs. Parr, this is, you know, whatever the babysitter's name is. Jack-Jack's acting really weird, really strange lately. You know, and he does, like, the whole, like, thing. Um, that whole process, we don't see what's happening with the babysitter. But they released the other half of it. They literally flipped it so that you get to see Jack-Jack unleashing his powers on the babysitter. And um, and then all that starting to transpire. And then at the end of it, she comes out and like and she like you hear a knock on the door. She thinks it's one of the pars or whatever. And like she's losing it because she's like the baby's teleporting. The baby's falling. The baby's coming through the roof. Baby's on fire. You know, baby's – and like she thinks this baby's going to die. <laughs> and then she's like, I'm going to die. You know, it's like she's losing it. Really funny. It was kind of. I think it was an after credit, but then they added it on the on the special features. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> he's doing it, uh, Mr. Funcaster. Kitty Fat One Hundred One is one of my closest friends, but he's also um, a major mutual troll. We troll each other back and forth on, on each other's videos, and he does actually work for uh, Voodoo, so that's uh, that's why he's spamming all this junk. And now I can't find everybody's messages. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Kitty Fat. Thanks, homie. Pfft. Get out of here, Zach. I'm just kidding. Don't go. I love you, man. All right. So, um, but yeah, that that whole like process with Jack Jack, they flip it so you get to see the other side, and then you get to see Syndrome show up at the door to to relieve the babysitter. He's like, yeah, they sent a babysitter relief, you know. And so like, it's really it's really funny. It's really cool. But I want to see if they're going to do that again in the special features on Incredibles 2. Because there was no after credit. Yeah. No after credit. So you guys don't have to stick around for that. But if um, if you if you if if they're going to do that on the Blu-ray, I certainly, certainly have to have that. I need it in my life. <laughs> and I hope they do. I hope they plan. I hope he's planning. Brad Bird's hope, hopefully planning to do a third movie. Because they, they, you know, they... They left things unfinished. Yeah, sure. They closed their primary storylines, but there was things that you expected to be wrapped that were not wrapped. And it's obvious they left an open door to continue forward with more. And um, I'll probably have to do a separate spoiler discussion. This was kind of a spoiler discussion, but some of you guys joined in after we talked about a lot of the spoilers. Mm -hmm. So if you want to catch those, start it back over. He's not planning a third one. Oh, that stinks. I'll have I'll do some research and see if I can find more like data. Maybe like maybe if the fans cry out, you know, like that's kind of like the Ryan Reynolds Deadpool thing. If the fans cry out for it enough, a studio will pick it up. A studio will do it, and hopefully, Brad Bird will see. Everybody loves his his content, you know. Like we love The Incredibles. It's a great franchise, and I hope that he continues. 
I know, we'll have to wait another 14 years. Yeah, hopefully not. Yeah, then my daughter will be in high school. <laughs> That'll be a trip. Oh my gosh, my daughter would probably be your age. Isn't that weird? Yeah. If that happens again, my daughter will be sitting here on the couch right where Trinity is at her <laughs> age. But then. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I know. Can Wait, you imagine? You'd be in like your 30s, I'd be in my 20s. Yeah. Abe, <laughs> oh. hey, I'll tell you what though. If he makes it again and it's the same quality as the as the first and the second or better, if it's the same or better, it will be the greatest animated trilogy of all time. Oh yeah. It for, for sure, sure will be. The the only competition it's got looking at is potentially How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah. And we don't we haven't seen the third one yet, but the trailer looks just good. Yeah, insane. It looks beyond any it looks amazing. I love the trailer for that one. And uh frankly I'm a huge fan of Ed Sheeran. <laughs> and they yeah. used his song in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixteen years old, you smoking hand rolled cigarettes. <laughs> Running from the laws in the backfield and getting drunk with my friends. Yeah. Yeah, How to Train Your Dragon. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't wait for that. It's gonna be so cool. Mm -hmm. um, yes, seriously. I really hope. Let's. You know what? I'm gonna make a point to tweet Brad Bird at least once a week and just be like, "Hey man, when's Incredibles three coming out?" Or, "Hey man, what? You know, where where's the Jack Jack attack for uh, number two or whatever? You know, for." Incredibles 2 or whatever. I'm just going to I'm going to tweet him all the time so he's always got something in his ear and hopefully, you know, some people will see that they'll want to do that as well. Maybe it'll get rolling as like some snowball effect and we'll get our uh Incredibles 3 in 14 and a half years. That'd be awesome. Hiccup is going all nomad on us. I know, he, like what happened? I, he's full on nomad. He looks like Chris Evans in Infinity War. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he still kind of talks like this. <laughs> I don't, I'm having a hard time remembering because I don't have that one on DVD. I don't get to watch that a lot. But I will watch those again. i got to watch those. Whenever there's a new movie coming out, I usually trail back to the first. Except for the Marvel films, I usually just watch the phase before it. Not the whole 18, 19 films before. But I usually watch those films right before uh, another movie comes out. Just to kind of refresh and catch up and... Um, maybe find things I didn't see prior to that, you know, find the Easter eggs, find the hidden things, ask those questions, you know, that I want answered in the next one, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, he's totally, yeah, uh, uh, Hiccup is a nerd in Chris Evans' body. Yeah, totally. Or at least in Chris Evans' head. <laughs> Chris Evans got a crazy body. That guy, and at least in Cap 1, dude was fit as junk. He was crazy. Insanely ripped. He could have played Thor. I don't know about that, but you know, as far as physique goes, he was crazy. Um, that was awesome. And then um, let's do another question. Um, what was what was your favorite power from Jack Jack? Oh. So from the first one, from the second one, we got to see his powers evolve. We got to see more Jack Jack powers, which was super cool. Um, this might be a little bit spoilery. But Trin, what was your uh, what was your favorite Jack Jack power? Um, and then you guys let us know as well. Uh, oh my gosh, we talked about it when we were at Great America. Which one was it? Not multiply, but laser. um, yeah, laser eyes. Laser eyes. They show that off or in the he trailer. Turns into a giant too. That's true. Yeah, when he that when he true. turned into a giant, like when he, he realized huge. he had the ability to grow, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, multidimensional baby. He fully is. It's so cool. Um, I love that they, they explain the multi-dimension stuff a little bit and that he could, like, hear you. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. That was really cool, yeah. That's some Doctor Strange stuff, man. Like, yeah. And, if and you, then how they had, like, the, like, remote or thingy would do where they could see him. Yeah, yeah. And they that was super cool, too. But on that note, Jack-Jack is kind of like, and I say kind of like, he's extremely like, they're Franklin Richards. The son of the Fantastic Four, you know, the Reed Richards and Susan Storm Fantastic Four, who's got, like, retarded amount of power. You know, he's just crazy. Yeah, Twilight Zone stuff. Um, you know, the laser eyes turning into metal. Um, uh, he's got the... Uh, the cloning was another one that was really fun to deal with. 
I loved the cloning. I thought that was awesome. Mama Shay is on board. <laughs> Hi, Shay. Hey, Shay. How you doing? We're talking about one of the best films of the year, The Incredibles 2. Yep. And it was so good. Very good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably go see it four or five more times. I will probably see that. If I can find the time, I'm a father of two young babies, but I will try to find time uh, for me and my wife to go back and see it a second time. Shay says, hey, hey. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, Shay, you definitely got to see The Incredibles too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it yeah. So good. Gavin said he liked it. It's so, so good. Oh my gosh. Um, the first one, incredible. <laughs> The second one, doubly incredible. It was so good. So good. All these, like, dad jokes are yeah, getting to me. Say. I know, yeah. That's all I do now is dad jokes. It's great. Um, probably taking Kieran and a nephew in next week, for sure. Mr. Funcaster, you have yourself a great night. God bless you, brother. And I will uh, see you on your next post. We love you guys. You guys have yourselves a great rest of your night. Go see The Incredibles 2 if you haven't. And if you have, go see it again because it deserves the money. Love you, Shay. Love you, Shay. Love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys stay tuned right here on The Stuff of Legend. We just have a lot to take care of with the new home and the move and all that stuff. And so um, that was able to get moving faster than we thought. So we're going to be moving very soon. And uh, I already packed my pops. She helped. And I think we posted new, that video. We didn't post that video yet. New video coming soon. New video coming soon of Trinity and I packing away my pop collection. And uh, any videos I post after that will either funny. have it, a different background, like a blank background, or you'll get to see my old station. I miss you too. Sorry. With none of the pops. She misses you. <laughs> and uh, we miss you guys. Yeah. And uh, tell everybody we said hey, and we love you, and we miss you. And God bless you guys. Take care, guys. Bye. Toodles. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.